Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this example with our fogged glass effect. Let's go and take a quick look. Alright, so I'm not sure if you're supposed to die in seven days after watching this or what, but uh, it's a pretty cool effect that uh, displaces the image behind the glass. So it can be used for a lot of different things and uh, luckily it's a pretty straightforward technique, so I uh, should have you on your way uh, momentarily. What's nice about this effect is that it's pretty dynamic, so whatever you have behind the glass will be displaced. And as you can see with my 3D camera, it's also somewhat a three-dimensional effect. I've got another example here, sort of like a, you know, a white fogged, you know, piece of glass, like maybe an office window or something like that. And another cool thing you could do with it is kind of create some displacement on a glass that's kind of looking out a window. So, you know, let's take a quick look. So you can see around the edges, we just get a little bit of displacement. So there's a lot of different uses for it. Um, well, at least two different ones. And uh, maybe we could think of some more. Let's go and get started. So we're going to create a new composition. We'll make it uh, 720p and uh, this looks good. And then we're going to create a new text layer. So we'll take the text tool and uh, we'll click in here and we'll type glass. So center this up and uh, maybe scale it a bit. Cool. All right, so we've got our text layer. Now what helps make this look more realistic is that the image is kind of blurred out as it gets closer to the glass. So it's sort of diffused and then becomes clear. Now, I was doing some research for this uh, tutorial and uh, let's see here. Scary shower curtains. And uh, it came across some cool uh, inspiration. And uh, one of the images here, you can see the hands are crystal clear and sharp, whereas the figure in the background is kind of diffused and out of focus. So. That's the idea. As it gets closer to the surface, it becomes more clear. You know, we can scroll down here, see some of these other ones. Now, this one is just not very realistic. This person should probably watch uh, this tutorial. Uh, you know, this, I don't know what's going on here. It looks like Princess Leia is having some kind of issue. We probably shouldn't scroll down anymore. Uh, back to the tutorial. So, we're going to use the blur as a way to create that diffusion. All right, let's go and set this up. We're going to turn on the 3D layer switch for our title. We're going to bring down the text properties. And we want to animate some properties for each character. So we're going to animate the blur. If we bring this down here, and we can increase the blur amount. And what this will allow us to do, if we go into the range selector, is blur the characters one at a time. So kind of a cool little effect. but we want to have some control over this. So let's go in here to the advanced and we're going to set the shape to ramp up and let's animate the offset here. So we'll animate it from negative 100 to about 100. So we get a nice fading effect. Now the other thing we want to do is add another property. So we actually want the position of each character to change as well. In order to change the position of each character, we need to turn on Enable Per Character 3D. And that'll change the layer switch to this sort of double box mode. And then we're going to add to the first animator a position property. So now what we can do is if we go here to the middle here, we can take the Z position, X, Y, Z, and push this off into Z space. So we can increase the blur and push it off. So now we kind of have this Cool. Now, I might turn up the ease low amount to about 50%, which will sort of slow it in as it comes to a stop. So just kind of make it a little bit more smooth. This is looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to create a 3D camera. And uh, 28 millimeter looks good. We'll hit OK. So now if we take the orbit tool, we can actually see that this is three-dimensional. So that's going to help later when we kind of animate the camera around as it fades in. Now, the other thing we might add to the uh, text property 
that we've animated is an opacity. So we can come in here, add opacity as well, and lower the opacity. So that way it's fading on and it's diffused. You know, we could blur it out even more. Right there, that's looking pretty good. I mean, I could keep going, so I will. Now, the other nice thing about this is that if we want to change the text, it will automatically update and we don't have to, you know, adjust our keyframes or anything like that. So it's kind of a cool way to work. All right, so now we want to create the displacements. I've got this ice texture and I've also got this ice normal map. So a normal map is a special image that's been processed. Now there's various ways to do that. I use crazy bump, but if you do a Google search for normal map generator, uh, you know, you can find some different stuff. These textures actually come from our Pro Shaders library, which is 3D shaders for like Element 3D. But what's cool is that they all include normal maps um, along with the diffuse texture. So you can actually use these for other things besides, you know, 3D work. So we're going to be taking a look at that. What I want to do is take our ice diffuse texture and bring it out into our comp. We're also going to make it a 3D layer. Now, the image is not quite large enough, so we're going to tile it using the motion tile effect. So we'll take the motion tile, drop it on our ice, and we're going to expand the output. So we'll just increase that, maybe 150, 150. So the other nice thing about all the pro shaders is that they all loop perfectly. So you can kind of see there's no looping lines, uh, even though we're sort of repeating those edges. Now, I'm going to duplicate the diffuse map and just take the normal map and replace it by holding down alt. So now I've got the normal map and the diffuse map right on top of each other. What I want to do is hide those for just a second and I'm going to create an adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer I'm going to add an effect. So I'm going to come over here to distort and we're going to add the displacement map effect. So this is going to allow us to select the normal map so we'll click on that and here we can start to see some displacement. So I can kind of tweak the value here and we're starting to see, you know, this diffusion. The cool thing about this is normal maps are meant to work with the displacement map. And that's why it's actually defaulted to red and green to start working with the colors of a displacement map. Let's take our text here. Let's scale it up a little bit. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's take our diffuse texture, turn it on. And let's change the transfer mode to overlay. So now we can start seeing our text in the background. Now, I'm going to change our text to be sort of like a dark bluish color here. Now, if I take the camera tool here and uh, move around, we can actually see a pretty cool effect right off the bat. Now, before we go on, let's keep working on the look here. So let's take our diffuse texture and I'm actually going to invert it. So I'll do channel invert. Now instead of inverting the color data I just want to invert the light data or the luminance and that way we maintain the same kind of color and then we'll also add a curves adjustment on top. Just trying to like flatten this out a little bit. Yeah, that's cool and uh, let's do some more color correction. So we'll create another adjustment layer, do another curves adjustment let's just add like a little bit of blue, bring the red channel down a touch and maybe the, something like that. And then let's add a little vignette around the edges. So we could do that pretty easily with another adjustment layer. Go to the ellipse tool and just draw a shape around the comp. Go to the mask, set it to subtract and turn up the feather a lot to like a few hundred. And then come over here to curves, one more, and just drop the brightness. Nice and easy. Okay, so let's go and name these layers. And on this layer we have our displacement map. Now, I'm actually gonna delete that. What we wanna do is add our displacement directly to our text layer. So we're gonna choose Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. And we're going to select the ice normal map. So now we can start to see this displacement. Now before this effect we actually want to add a blur. So let's add a fast blur. Drop it before the displacement. 
turn it up. So that way, in combination with it, you can kind of see it just looks a little bit more diffused. All right, so this is looking pretty good, but we have a slight technical problem. And that is, if I move the camera around, you can actually see that the displacement doesn't move at all. It kind of just stays locked there. And uh, it should be moving. So if I move the camera over even further, let's see, if I slide the camera over here, you can actually see the displacement gets cut off. So anytime you have an effect that uses another layer as a texture map, After Effects doesn't recognize that I have the motion tile effect applied to it or that it's a 3D layer. So what we need to do is pre-compose that layer. So if we turn it back on here, choose pre-compose at the bottom, and what that will do is allow us to put the layer inside of a separate subcomp. So we'll call this ice normal map. Now I want to move all the attributes into the new composition. So what that means is I want to take the motion tile and the 3D layer switch and put it into the new comp. So I'll hit OK. So now if I open up that comp by double clicking, you can see I just have that texture inside of it and it's got the motion tile effect. But now in here, the effect's gone and it's no longer a 3D layer. It's just a 2D layer now. If I just shut it off here and then turn on the collapse transformation switch. So we can toggle the switches, turn this switch on right here. Bam. So now watch this. Our displacement texture is going to move with our map. So if you want to see the difference, when it's off, the texture stays the same. When it's on, the texture moves with the 3D. So this is actually very cool because if we look, you know, in an area like right here, we want that to be updating with our texture. So now if I turn that on and I move my camera around, you can see that that texture is now three-dimensional as well. So that's what we want. We want the surface of the glass to displace our text behind it. So I can illustrate that. Maybe we can solo our text here. And if we take a look here, you can see that the glass is displaced by the texture. Now if we move back here, we've got some text that gets faded out in the background. Watch this. As we move it around, we can see some of that three-dimensional displacement. So let's go ahead and keep going and, and that'll become more clear on why that's important. So we'll go ahead, unsolo this, and uh, we'll go down to half res here. Now we want to add some more depth to this. So you can see feels like we have a lot more depth and what we need to do is create some texture that's behind the glass. What I'm going to do is create a black solid and uh, we'll call this background and we'll put it at the very bottom. So now it kind of makes everything disappear but if we start adding in some 3D layers, so for example let's add in some you know really light colored 3D layers, hit OK and We'll take the ellipse tool and just create like a circle and then feather it out. And we'll put this just above the background. So check this out. We start to create these little hot spots. Now, if I make it a 3D layer and push this further back in 3D space and maybe scale it up a bit, we'll actually get a little bit of parallaxing here so kind of adds to the depth factor and we can duplicate it uh, you know maybe scale it down create a few little you know random spots of, uh, of illumination essentially so you know you can move them around in 3d space so they're sort of at different levels and uh, control D by the way to duplicate and they don't all have to be the same opacity so you can lower the opacity we can also create another one, control D, and maybe put it in the middle here and uh, maybe lower the feather amount so it just looks a little bit brighter. So just sort of like focusing, you know, your eye into the middle a bit. Scale that up a touch. So that's cool. And because it's a 3D effect, you know, you can add some more of these beyond, you know, the main area where you're looking. So it feels like there's stuff past where you're looking. Okay, so this looks pretty good, but I think we want to add even more depth. 
And the way we're going to do that is take our diffuse texture and we're going to duplicate it. So control D and we're going to put it below our text. And then we're going to hit P and move the position further away. So just push it back and we're kind of getting cut off there. So we'll scale it up and uh, push it back a little bit more. Well, we want it to be in front of those layers. So that looks pretty good. We could rotate it too so it doesn't look like it's tiled. Okay. So this is going to add even more depth. So you can kind of see the little bit of parallax going on there. So in order to make the background more real, what we need to do is add some displacement. So what I'm going to do is create another adjustment layer. And we're going to put it just above the ice texture. So below our text, but above all the background stuff. So we'll call this uh, displace. And uh, again, we're going to add a fast blur. And we're going to add a displacement map. So distort displacement. So we'll select our ice normal map comp that we created. We'll uh, repeat the edge pixels on our blur, turn the blur up a bit. So check this out. Even when we just start blurring the image, it actually already starts to diffuse the background. But once we turn up a little bit of texture, a little ice texture, you can see it really starts to pop. Now I'm punching it up probably more than I would, but just so that you can see the uh, the volume that it's creating. So I like it to be pretty subtle, but it's hard to probably see in the uh, screen capture. So. so to see the difference here, if we turn this on and off, so that's on. Now, the other thing I think is important is taking our text and actually just pushing it off the surface. So even once it gets to the surface, I want to just push it away just a touch so that it's always right underneath the surface. So it's not all the way up against it. So let's just push it back a little bit. So that way it feels like it's always just a touch behind. So now the problem of making the text become clear. So it's actually pretty simple. We're going to duplicate it and we're going to get rid of these effects or rather tone them down really, really low and the blur as well. Pretty much it. We can lower the opacity here and we even change the transfer mode to maybe overlay or something like that. Give it a cool like blending look. Might tweak the displacement. This just comes down to taste. You know, you just want to come up with something that you like. Lower the displacement values, whatever. But because of the work we did earlier, it's going to look something like this. So that looks pretty cool. Now, because we did all this work on the 3D, we want to have a little bit of camera movement. So if we hit P, hold down Shift, hit A, we can animate the position of the camera. So Let's see here. These are our two keyframes for our animation. So let's take those two, select them, and then just stretch them out a little bit. Let's see. Hold down Alt, and we'll just stretch them out a touch. Or you could just take them and move them. Whoa, this is too advanced. All right. Very nice. Now, the other thing we can do is if we want to play around with the, the animation curve, what we can do is go into the range advanced and, uh, you know, just play around with, you know, like the ramp effect, you know, play around with this value. You know, if we do 100%, let's see here. Ease low, 100%. It's going to feel a little smoother as it comes up. But, uh, you know, it's just keyframe stuff there. Now, as far as the camera, we uh, set the keyframe. Let's move forward a bit and let's just, you know, orbit the camera a little bit. Maybe orbit it in the other direction. So this way, the camera is going to be moving, which will give us even more of that sort of three dimensional parallax so that we can actually get a sense that that text is behind the glass. You know, we could even exaggerate it just for the sake of the tutorial. 
that's actually why there's so many lead up shots because I did this effect and I was like, it looks pretty two dimensional. I don't think people are going to be able to appreciate all of the three dimensionality that went into this. So cutscene always works every time. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's the idea. Some actual 3d displacement in a sense. And, uh, you know, I think it looks uh, pretty nice. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Andrew Kramer. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check us out on uh, Facebook and on Twitter. Come check it out. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. Oh, that kind of looks like a threat, actually. I didn't mean for that to seem uh, intimidating at all. Sorry about that.